What's up, YouTube? Finals is finally over. Summertime's about to start. It's freaking hot outside, so that means it's time to get some work done. All right, so today we're gonna be working on a bash bar with this dime over mandrel inch and a half by 0.120 diameter tube. This shit's filthy. All right, so here's why we're making a bash bar. It's to replace our front crash bar. Why are we replacing the front crash bar? Well, because the big ass Mishimoto three inch core, or actually four inch core in the cooler we have is definitely not going to fit under the stock crash bar. So, today, we're going to cut, measure, and make a new bash bar. All right, and here it is, along with the rest of the Mitsubishi parts I have. Took this off my car last week. As you can see, this is gonna be pretty easy. Honestly, it's a bunch of cutting. Well, measure twice, cut once type stuff, so. I did want to extend the sides, like have like an angle at like the end of the bash bar. I'll see if that still works, but honestly, behind the bumper is not that much, not that much space, so. Uh, yeah, so we will be retaining this factory. Oh, nice. So it's gonna have to grind that off. This factory clip because it goes to the top, connects to the top somehow. And I guess I'll take off these two just in case. But this is the major piece right here. So, uh, yeah, so we're gonna measure this from beam to beam. And it does have a slight arch in it. We're gonna be making it straight. I don't have a tool bender. And if I did, it would probably just like an angle bender. I don't have like a roller. But, um, yeah, so it'll probably just be straight. So we're going to measure from here to here. And then with the same six foot pipe, we should have enough. Because this is about six inches, probably eight inches from here, from the bar to here. We should have enough to make the ends. And then if we have anything over, we can flare out the ends, just like how this is flared out a tiny bit. So, I'm gonna put some pizzazz to it. Right, so, we got a trusty Home Depot brand measuring tape, and we're going to measure from the inside here. It does have a slight bend in it, so I don't think it's gonna be accurate too much. But I guess I'll try and get as accurate as I can. Hook it on there. Oh, well, fuck it. We're going to eyeball it to the point where it's semi-correct. So 44 inches. Maybe about 43 and a half. So we're going to cut it 44 inches just because. Why not? We have six for the tubing here. And it should be more than enough. So. So why I got... A little explanation on why I got inch and a quarter, or inch and a half actually, by 120 because it's the SCCA standard requirements for you know drifting and racing, and NHRA also follows these same rules too because my car is over 3,000 pounds or close to it when I'm done to it, but. Yeah, I didn't really have much on the bash bar, but I try and just guesstimate it. If this is the same size as they'll do for the roll cage inside the car, that front bash bar should be fine. So we're going to measure this, and as you can see, 44 inches is definitely enough. We're gonna have extra, so we can do our little nice little flares at the end. And I do have a flat piece, a flat piece of steel. I think like a quarter inch. Thick. 
this is this is this is all free steel guys so don't get on me if it's too thick i don't want to make this too heavy but if i have to it's free fuck it so we're going to be remaking those ends and drilling the same holes so we can bolt it onto the car the same way it came off all right so on to measuring all right so we got this 44 inch line drawn all around the tool how I like to do it is measure it in three spots, spin it, measure it again, spin it, draw a line, and I connect all the dots. It's the simplest, easiest way. So you can get straight and easy progress. You know, it's not hard. So get your line straight. So now we're going to be measuring this. Uh, I'll measure it a bit over, but because bigger is always better. Um, so it's easy to cut off what you don't need rather than adding on because adding on you would require lots of welding uh, so right now we're looking at seven it is angled but six and a half but well, we're gonna make it seven if we didn't have too much we'll just cut off so it's perfect all right so we got the bar all measured up here we got both sevens at this side and 44 on this side still have 14 inches of extra flares so we can have seven inch flares if behind the bumper provides us the space but that's for later in the video all right so I'm gonna start cutting this up and start filling the pieces so it should be easy all right so for the cutting setup I have got this nice fish tank table a bunch of junk next to it. Sheesh. Uh, got my DeWalt grinder with a nice cutting disc, 14 inch cutting disc. And yeah, we're basically going to be putting this in the center and cutting right next to it. We're going to get the 44 first. Yeah, so yeah, we're basically going to put this in the center and just cut right through it. I put this in the center first and then you know cut the 44 and you know maybe we should cut the sevens first yeah well we'll see whichever way i choose but so make sure you use the proper safety equipment like gloves or these husky gloves make sure you have goggles to protect your eyes from flying metal because when this metal comes at you it's wickedly hot so, make sure you're protected. And come back when this thing is cut. Alright, now that we got the pipes cut, we're going to now cut the face plates for the uh, bar to be welded to. So we can easily bolt it on and bolt it off whenever we please. So, it should be pretty simple. I already took the measurements, you can see the lines. Yeah, so. After that, we're going to be cutting off this piece because this is the only really piece that we need. This is nothing. This is nothing. I mean, pretty sure to factory spec, there's something, but to what I'm doing, they're nothing. So I'm going to cut these two pieces and. Alright. And so now the sun's coming back out. It should rain a little bit, but everything should be good. All right, so I'm gonna cut these pieces and line them up and see how they fit. Everything cut up now. 
I'm gonna take off that piece that I needed. So now this is basically garbage because measurements and everything is taken. So now we can focus on these. So as you can see, this is one piece, and then this is two pieces. I don't know if I explained this already. We're just gonna weld these two together so it creates one piece since I don't have more of this. So I'm gonna clamp it down and try and weld it. All right, clamp down and ready to go. Just gonna tack it here. I'm gonna tack it here, probably up to like the middle. So it's kind of bowing in like a triangle kind of so after we tack it here we're just gonna remove this clamp straighten it out and then do the rest now I'm definitely not a professional welder more of like a hobby welder if you may so I don't have the most expensive the best shit you know most expensive high quality shit so, today we're going to be working with Chicago Electric, and you wouldn't believe how much I got this gasless welder for, and Harbor Freight, you guys probably all seen it, it's $100, and with a coupon you probably get it down for like 90 you know, so I already practiced on this welder, it's not actually a bad welder, it just doesn't have a lot of settings like the professional one does, uh, but it works, and for what I'm doing, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So, I also got the, you know, auto darkening and welding helmet so I can see what I'm welding and not holding this ridiculous face mask they give you. That's just useless, plain useless. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take this out of the box and weld those two pieces together. Alright, so if you guys have never seen this welder before, let me give you a little breakdown. This is where the business happens. Everything tangled up here. This is our ground. I'm just gonna stick this right there. Give me a good ground. And let's plug this in. Just like that. Alright, so we got our welding helmet on and we'll definitely due to the size of the thickness of this, it's actually instructions here. So yeah, we're definitely gonna use it on that setting. So, cool. Everything should come out good. Third power it on. And yeah, let's get to welding. fat bead down a bunch of splatter I swear I, I think it's just a machine no matter what setting I put it on or how far or how close I am to it a metal it's always splatter why don't we fuck whatever so I'm gonna grind this down hammer it make it flat and after I grind it I'll see if it's strong enough if it's not then we'll flip it over and weld the other side All right, nice and grinded down, and still hot. All right, so now we basically got everything cut, everything removed, face plates made, leveled flat with the hammer. Time to move on to the next step, 
gonna weld it. We're try gonna, probably gonna try and get a little bend in it. Because the straight bar looks a bit, <clears throat> looks a bit weird. So after you have a round bar and then you switch to the straight bar, it's kind of weird. So we're gonna try and put a bend in it. And then, you know, hold everything together. That's how it looks in the car. All right, so I'm gonna clean those up and we're gonna notch this too. And yes, we are back in my backyard. I'll explain that in the next video. All right, so how I like to notch these things is that um, I like to just kind of do a little bit of math. You see this is inch and a half tubing. And then you see that this has to stretch around. So it's about a third. I believe it's about a third, so you cut this, you make like a round mark, let's say about close to half an inch. Most of the time it's mostly eyeballing it, but let's see. Um, yeah, so I'm going to notch it so it sits this way. After I get this side done, then I'll weld up, I'll plate and weld up that side and make sure everything looks even. All right, so now that it's all marked, let's see. So you're gonna take the angle disc, well, the angle grinder, and just cut straight forward, basically like that. You ain't got no fancy notcher or anything, but you guys can make it work with a regular grinder as you guys probably know this already but so we're gonna be using this cutting it straight off and then flipping it to the other side best angle grinder but got the job done all right we got this piece lined up we're gonna tack weld it put it on the car and see how it's looking and then do the other side I don't want you guys I don't want to bore you guys with the same process so we'll come back both sides should be tacked and ready Alright guys, after a long day, everything is 
you know, together, I guess. So this is basically like the gist of like how to basically make your own bash bar without paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for one. So obviously I'm going to paint it, cut it, make it look nice. I wanted to put a bend in it, but I guess it's fine. It's like that. I didn't want it to interfere too much with the front bumper. But um, yeah, so I'll end it off right here. Forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Forget, never stop modifying.